Who's the one judge you don't F around with? Yep, Judge Ricky. She's in trouble. A lot. This is in the District Court of Butler County, Kansas, case entitled State of Kansas versus Taryn Janet Brown, case number 2024-CR82. Brett Sweeney appears for the State of Kansas. Joseph Favre is defense counsel. Taryn Brown now appears late on this Zoom meeting. Uh, Ms. Brown, I'm going to ask you to stay in one place. I don't want to get motion sickness trying to watch you move around on your screen. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ms. Brown, I want to address this first. Not only were you late, uh, the court's docket notes indicate that when you appeared back on April the 8th, you were ordered specifically to appear at the Judicial Center for this hearing. How come you're not there? Um, I didn't have a right, and I tried to call them and let them know that I did not have a right. That's not an excuse in the view of the court. How would as a, how as a would privilege of bond, you're allowed to go to the community, but you have to show up for court, not only when the court tells you to show up, but also where the court tells you to show up back before Zoom was utilized, which actually is to the convenience of many people. Everyone had to appear at the Judicial Center for court every single time. So it wasn't an excuse then, and it's not an excuse now, especially when you have six weeks to plan your trip back to the judicial center. I had a Brown. ride there. My mom's car broke down and I tried to explain that to them. And they said, we'll do a zoom. That's their exact words. And I have an email stating that. Do you know anything about this, Mr. Sweeney? No, Your Honor. Do you, Mr. Favre? Uh, no, Judge. I did. I did send Miss Brown the Zoom link today later, but no, I did not know about that conversation. What are your client's intentions here today, Mr. Judge, she intends on waiving her right to an evidentiary preliminary hearing and then proceeding with a felony plea. Where are you at right now, Ms. Brown? I uh, just got back to my house because I just got off work. You're in a car, obviously, right? Uh, this is my homegirl's car that just picked me up from work to bring me home real quick so I could do this. I haven't even went to go pick up my kids yet. Well, you know, I hope you're not too inconvenienced by court, Ms. Brown. No, I'd rather get this done and over with and dealt with before I go pick up my kids. All right. Uh, it's my understanding that you intend to enter a felony plea today, Ms. Brown? Yes, I do. Favre, what would she be pleading to? The judge count one is possession of cocaine. Uh, she'll be pleading to that. Stable dismiss counts two and three. Is that consistent with your understanding, Mr. Sweeney? It is, Your Honor. Is it consistent with your understanding, Ms. Brown? Yes, it is. I lost video. Yeah, turn your video back on, Taryn. Ms. Brown? What is happening here? Hmm. All right, Council, we're going to leave the meeting open. Uh, I'll take a brief pause here. Uh, we'll see if she rejoins. Bob Ray, do you have an update for the court? Judge, she just messaged me and said that her phone was low on power, apparently died, and then 
I told her that she needs to get it on a charger and she has not, I've not heard back from her. So that's it. After a brief recess, the court reconvenes in state of Kansas versus Taryn Janet Brown, case number 2024 CR 82. Mr. Sweeney, Mr. Favre appear as counsel just as before. However, we've lost the defendant, um, Taryn Janet Brown, and it doesn't appear she's going to rejoin this meeting anytime soon. Mr. Favre, do you have any updated information to provide the court? I do not judge. Um, I do not. All right. The court's going to order at this time bond forfeiture and a bench warrant issued for the arrest of Taryn Janet Brown. Uh, the, the primary reason that last time she was in court, I ordered her to appear at the Butler County Judicial Center is that I have very few technological problems using Zoom from that location. I wanted her at that location and nowhere else. She defied the court's order, decided to appear on her own Zoom in her homegirl's car or whatever, and, and fumbled around with faulty technology that did not allow her to adequately participate in this court proceeding. And the court's not going to tolerate that. She defied a court order. I'm going to order bond forfeiture bench warrant for her arrest with her to be held on a no bond hold pending further proceedings before the court. We'll reschedule proceedings or do appropriate business when we have her back in custody and we can actually have her on a Zoom meeting where we can accomplish something. I regret that uh, time has been wasted of the prosecuting attorney and the witness that had been subpoenaed. Um, and I, I don't blame you for this, Mr. Favre. Uh, when I give a defendant a direct court order, I expect him to follow it. You have every right to expect they are going to follow it. I do appreciate your attempts to try to get her on the meeting in her home girl's car, Zoom, whatever. But obviously that didn't work. And I, I think we've all waited long enough. So bond forfeiture bench warrant, no bond hold. The county attorney's office can prepare that warrant as soon as administratively they can get to it. Yes, sir. Anything else, Mr. Sweeney? No, Your Honor. Mr. Pavre? Not this time, Your Honor. The Brown matter is in recess at this time, and this meeting may be in her homegirl's car or whatever. Car. Cruising through the night. Mr. Watson, I, I'm not aware that you have any more matters on this docket. Do you have any more? I don't believe so, Your Honor. Okay. I think Mr. Favre is going to take it home from here. So you're released from the meeting, Mr. Watts. Thank you. That's correct, Your Honor. I note we have a four o'clock uh, in your office. Well, if, if I'm done. It's complete. Yeah, if you're done. Yes, sir. Come on over, Mr. Watts, and you can just wait, uh, and I'll join you as soon as I can. Yes, sir. Okay, I have a female individual at the detention center. Which one is this? This is Mrs. Taryn Brown. The state of Kansas versus Taryn Janet Brown, 24 CR 82. Amber Norris appearing for the state, Joseph Favre's defense counsel, and defendant Brown appearing from the jail Zoom location. What is the announcement made here? Judge, Ms. Brown at this time has been advised for a right to hearing. She'd waive her right to preliminary hearing. She's going to enter a plea of guilty to count one, possession of cocaine, and uh, we can proceed from there. State will dismiss remaining counts. Is that correct, Ms. Norris? Yes, Your Honor, that is accurate. Very well. Ms. Brown, importantly, you've been present when your attorneys made an announcement. First of all, that you intend to waive your right to a preliminary hearing, which is a probable cause determination. Are you waiving that right? Yes. And is uh -huh. it your intention to enter a plea of guilty and accept conviction for possession of cocaine as charged in count one? Yes, Your Honor. All right, I've got a number of questions I need to ask you regarding the taking of such a plea. Okay. There's something you don't understand. I'll give you the opportunity to confer privately with your lawyer. Let the court know if you need that time to get further advice. State your name for the record, please. Karen Brown. And how old are you at this point? 23. What's the highest level of education that you've attained? 
12th. You believe you're going to have difficulty understanding any of the legal concepts we're going to be discussing here in court? Yes, Your Honor. You think you will have difficulty understanding them? A little of them, yes. Okay, well, again, no one's trying to trick you or trip you up. I want you to understand and know what's going on. So if you don't understand something, let me know, okay? Okay. Have you ever been a judge to be mentally ill? No. Okay. Are you currently under the influence of alcohol or any drug? No. Are you supposed to be taking any type of prescription medication that you're not getting? No. Okay. So you believe your mind is clear and that you do have a full understanding of what's going on here in court? Yes. Okay. You understand the nature of the charge in this case, possession of cocaine? Yes. All right. You understand that when you enter a plea of guilty, you are admitting that act that's been charged by the state? Yes. You also understand that when you enter a plea of guilty, you give up any legal defenses that you might have had to that possession of cocaine charge? Yes. Are you aware that in a trial, the state must present evidence against you in open court, that any witnesses must testify in open court in your presence, that you have the right to cross-examine witnesses with the assistance of your lawyer, Mr. Favre, and that you could present evidence at a trial and present uh, and subpoena your own witnesses to court? Yes. You also understand that at such a trial, you personally would have a privilege against self-incrimination, which means that you could testify in your case under oath if you wanted to, but no one could force you or compel you to testify against yourself if you didn't want to. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. You understand that when you enter a plea of guilty, you give up these valuable trial rights that the court has described? Yes. Are you also aware that you have a right to a trial by jury and that before you could be found guilty, that jury would have to be satisfied as to your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes. You understand that when you enter a plea of guilty, you give up your right to a trial by jury and the requirement that you be found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Yes. You understand that you have a right to appeal a guilty verdict if you have a trial? Yes. You further understand that you may appeal your sentence after entering a plea of guilty, but generally you may not appeal your judgment of conviction after you enter such a plea. Yes. Are you aware of the possible penalties that could be imposed as a result of this a guilty plea that you're attempting to make? Yes, I am. Let's go over those. Possession of cocaine, as charged in this case, is a level five drug felony. Under the Kansas Sentencing Guidelines Act grid, in the most favorable criminal history category of I, you could receive as little as a 10-month prison sentence. In the most severe criminal history category of A, you could receive up to a 42 month sentence. So the sentencing range is 10 to 42 months in prison, depending on your criminal history. As you said today, Ms. Brown, we do not know with certainty what your criminal history is. You better than anyone else here really ought to know what your own criminal record looks like. But that would be researched by the court services department. And based on the outcome of that research, as of the date of sentencing, that will determine where you fall excuse me, along the level five line, and then you'll be sentenced accordingly. You understand that? Yes. You also understand that if you have a person felony on your record already, Ms. Brown, at time of sentencing, you are in a presumptive prison category. I did not know that, but I do now. Okay. Does that change your mind about going forward? No. Okay. You also understand that you are subject to up to a $100,000 fine for this offense? Yes. In addition to any fine, are you aware that you could be assessed and be required to pay court costs, certain fees, including reimbursement of legal fees and expenses, and restitution to victims, if any are owed, as part of your sentencing orders? Yes, I am. <clears throat> Mandy, could you bring me a bottle of water, please? You also realize that as a direct consequence of this plea, you will be sentenced to an extended period of reporting probation, reporting parole, or post-release supervision as deemed appropriate at time of sentencing. Yes, I do. You also understand that both probation and post-release supervision periods start at 12 months in duration, but can run up to 60 months under some circumstances. 
Yes. Okay. You also understand that if there are any special sentencing rules under the law that apply to you, it could affect your eligibility for probation or otherwise affect your sentence. Yeah, I do. Now, did you have an ample opportunity to fully discuss your legal case and all of these circumstances with your attorney, Mr. Favre, before proceeding yes. here today? Yes, I did. Are you satisfied with the services and advice given to you by him? Yes. All right. Now, the uh, guilty plea that you're attempting to make hasn't been based upon any threats or promises as to what this court will do in regards to your sentence or any other type of threat or promise? Yes. Okay. Now, we're not talking about plea agreements. I'm talking about, did anybody threaten you to do this? Oh, no. Is there any other promise other than the plea agreement that's been made to you? No. Okay. Just, I want to make sure you understand that for any plea deals between your counsel and the county attorney's office regarding sentencing recommendations, that this court is not bound by any agreements made. Court may and shall consider them as recommendations, but is not bound by them. Do you understand that? Yes, I am. So let me ask you formally, how do you plead to this charge of possession of cocaine? I plead guilty. Okay. Uh, all right, Ms. Brown, what did you do that would constitute that crime? Tell me what happened. Uh, I had possession of it while I got traffic stopped. Possession of what? Cocaine. Okay, where was it? In my bra. Okay, and you knew it was there? Yes, I, I did. So. I would hope you would. And yes. you knew it was cocaine, right? Yes. And you don't have the legal right to be possessing that cocaine, do you? No, I do not. Okay. According to the state's charging document, this took place around February 21 of 2024. Is that when it happened? Yes. And where did it happen at? Where did I'm you get pulled over? Uh, Butler County, I'm pretty sure. Okay, well, tell me where. On the freeway. Freeway, are you talking about the turnpike? I think it was, yes. It was on the, one of the freeways. But you're not contesting the state's allegation that it was somewhere in Butler County, right? No. Okay, so do you now freely, knowingly, and voluntarily enter a plea of guilty and accept conviction for count one, possession of cocaine? Yes, I do. Okay. Ms. Norris, do you know of any legal reason why the court should not accept this defendant's plea? No, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Favre, are you aware of any such legal reason? I'm not, Your Honor, no. Okay. Ms. Brown, are you aware of any legal reason or any other good reason why the court shouldn't accept your plea here today? No. The court will accept the guilty plea made by Defendant Brown and finds that that plea is made voluntarily. She has an understanding of the nature of her charge and the consequences of her plea and a factual basis for the plea does exist. Court adjudges, adjudges her, therefore convicted in count one of possession of cocaine, a level five drug felony. Other charges are dismissed pursuant to plea agreement. Court orders a pre-sentence report be completed to determine Ms. Brown's criminal history, and the court will set an appropriate date for sentencing. I wish I could just go ahead with it now, Ms. Brown, but I can't. There has to be a pre-sentence investigation and report compiled. It takes about eight weeks. Okay. So I'm going to set your sentencing date for early November. Okay, Your Honor. Friday morning, November 8th, Mr. Favre. I can set it uh, late morning at 11 o'clock. Fridays are always dicey, but 11 o'clock would probably work. Let's do 11. Yeah. Okay. Taryn Brown's sentencing is set for 11 o'clock a.m. on Friday, November the 8th. Ms. Brown must obviously fully participate in that sentencing. Friday, November 8, 11 o'clock. Ms. Brown, uh, as part of uh, this pre-sentence process and perhaps to determine Senate Bill 123, which is a treatment program, eligibility, you may be asked to do one or more assessments, a risk needs assessment and a substance abuse assessment. 
you are ordered to comply with those. It's in your best interest to do so, so sentencing does not get held up. I'll yes, hold you responsible if it doesn't. Okay. So comply with those assessments. Friday, November 8, 11 o'clock is the sentencing in the case. Uh, what's Ms. Brown's uh, bond status right now? So, Judge, Ms. Brown is on a no bond hold. She had previously failed to appear at her first PHC. Actually, she appeared, had some technical difficulties with her Zoom, and then was not able to get on. So she was there anyway, and then was not able to go through. Um, the court eventually issued a warrant for her. Um, I have been in contact with her family, her fiance, as well as her mother, who is taking care of her children. Um, she is going to be living in a sober living house. We're asking the court to set a bond for her at this time of a much lower amount. Some of the neighborhood her family can make. Uh, we're hoping for 2,500 cash or surety um, or, you know, even lower than that. But the Miss, Miss Browns, this is her first ever felony. Um, she is going to be either H or I box. She's been in custody for over 30 days at this point, I believe. So, um, like I said, she has a lot of resources. And, and frankly, the strain on her being in custody is hard on her family. So we'd ask the court to consider uh, lowering her bond at this time. State's position on the request. Your Honor, I do expect her to be presumptive probation. And Your Honor, her bond previously was 4,000 cash or surety. Um, I do not have an objection to the court setting a bond. I do think it should be um, a cash or surety based on the defendant's uh, failure to appear. Uh, but I, I do not have an issue with uh, the lesser amount uh, of 4000 or possibly even less. Like I said, she does appear to be presumptive uh, probation. Thank you, Ms. Norris. Ms. Brown, I hate failures to appear. It brings progress on cases to a halt. Your case was filed, I think, back in February. We're still messing around with it in September without any real complications or delays in your cases that wasn't caused directly by you not showing up. Agreed. Okay, well, at least I'm glad that you admit you're the problem. Whether you should be given another chance on bond or not, it's, it's that's really problematic. Ms. Brown, you've already demonstrated you don't necessarily take court ordered uh obligations to appear seriously. I don't know how Mr. Favre can know that you're going to be in a sober living house. Uh, you have to be admitted to such programs. And with you uh, being in jail the last couple of months, it could be that you might be able to get in. I, I'm a little bit unclear that you would for sure be able to get in. But that's not going to make a difference to this court, Ms. Brown, because I'm inclined to give you another chance. Your attitude has been very good today, Ms. Brown. I think you get it finally. I hope you do. I do. But I'll tell you what, here's the deal. I'm really worried that when you get out, you're going to forget all about the pre-sentence report. You're not going to do your assessments. You're not going to contact court services. You're not going to do what you're supposed to do. And then we're going to have a big mess on our hands again. I'm on the right path. I've got this two months really did me justice. Like it really got me sober. It got me to in my right mind, state of mind and yeah, for right now. See, and that's what worries I, me. I'm good. I, I got this. I promise on everything. I will do everything I possibly needed to do. I want the same Taryn Brown to show up at sentencing that I'm seeing today. Will do. I've been promised that many times. And very Besides the crying. <laughs> All right. I'm going to set bond as requested by the defense attorney. 2,500 cash or surety. I hope you can make it, Taryn. But just Thank make you. sure that you show up for court when you're supposed to and do those assessments. You're obligated to call court services as soon as you make bond and get set up with them for these assessments, okay? Will do. All right. Thank you. All right. Just don't let yourself down, Ms. Brown. I will not. I got two babies looking for, forward to right. me, so. 2,500 cash for professional surety is established as a new bond in the case. Thank you. If there's nothing further, the Taryn Brown matter will be in recess at this time. We'll move on to another matter. What's your next court date? That's the time. I need to here. Call court services. In her homegirl's car or whatever. In her homegirl's 
car Cruising through the night Or whatever She didn't show up to court It ain't sitting right Messing around Playing with fire Soon connection lost Nothing to inspire Taking the wheel Feeling so alive She's breaking the rules No need to hide Her trouble's behind yeah, She's on her car, own Leaving it all behind The past overthrown Or whatever Late night drive in her homegirl's car Homegirl's car She's letting go in a homegirl's car Or whatever Feeling the wind blow Homegirl's car In her home In her homegirl's car In her homegirl's car Or whatever In her homegirl's car In her home In her homegirl's car Or whatever In her homegirl's car Care, homegirl's car, or whatever. The court's not going to tolerate that. Don't care at all. Or whatever.